Hello everyone, my name is Tromat and today we're going to do a Talia guide, a complete guide in which I will tell you most things that I know for mid lane, uh, things that might help you in your climb, might teach you how to play Talia mid and some bits of advice that might be useful for other lanes, so jungle, support, bot, top, wherever you play her. Now, I'm gonna try to explain it clearly in the first part of the video, some concepts of what you gotta generally do especially on mid and then I'm going to go for other lane as well a bit by bit and in the second part of the video I'm going to play a flex game and not a solo queue game because I want to focus on explaining these parts if I play solo queue I have to focus much more onto the game and I cannot really explain actively what I do that good unless I uh, watch over the replay but I don't want to watch the replay I just want to play flex and talk over the game of what I do what I try to do what's the mistakes that I generally did in that play or that I will may do so I'm gonna start here um, I'm gonna go very quick through runes and builds of for every role what I think real, real quick now you gotta choose generally between Dark Harvest or Electric Cute Dark Harvest if you fight a lot or Electric Cute if you don't I generally play Electric Cute because I don't have the guarantee that I will have less fights than I don't have a guarantee that there will be lots of fighting, but on support, on bot, on jungle, obviously it's recommended to play with Dark Harvest, on mid and top if you feel like it, but <clears throat> Electric has a smaller cooldown, so I kinda uh, agree with it more early on. Now, I play with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, because I like to have a very big speed in mid game, uh, and Ravenous Hunter, I kinda dislike it now, because it's kinda nerfed. Uh, Presence of Mind, Cup the Grace, and Rune Stats, 2 AP runes, and um, Armor and Magic Grace is based on it. Obviously, you can go for Transcendence here on secondary or something else, whatever you feel like it works best for you. This isn't set in stone. Quickly, for items, if you aren't a support, you generally go for Lion Trees and Sorc Shoes. These two are mandatory, these are very strong. If you are support, you can go for Rift Maker, maybe, or Night Harvester. Nah, Night Harvester, definitely. Like Harvester for support and if you have mana problems on support you can go line this as well like Ludens has been nerfed Everfrost is quite shit where is it this one and the rest of them you kind of need the mana so lines works best sork shoes and after that you can go for either cosmic drive zonia banshees based on what you like most oblivion or in most games and lots of vision words you, you can shape your build however you want but if you feel you don't have damage you can go for rabadons after landry sork shoes and one of those three items and void stuff obviously you can do for that as well if they stack magic rules. if you don't stack void stuff is quite bad because you lose a lot of potential ap from other items or effects Control words, I buy at least 4 or 5 control words per game at the minimum. My average I think is 5 or 6 in the games I lose, in the games I win. Control words will always help you set up the WQ combo from uh, vision from right here for example. Let's just say you're here and you have a vision word and this is their base the enemy base and you know they are coming to check their support has no idea that you're just waiting here because you already know they don't have words around here or you cleared it or your support put a vision word there or here and you know you can just stroll around to here wait for someone squishy and one shot him that's what you generally do on Talia if you want to have the advantage and to have to gain that edge over people after you bought the build, you got the runes, you understood the skills, uh, generally Tilia is very much Q oriented right now and your full combo deals a lot of damage after you understood those and some tricks, I'm not going to that go for my video with Tilia in under 4 minutes, you're going to go for mid lane, for bot lane, for top lane, jungle, wherever, and jungle she's quite weak, she'll get buffed in 825, I'm gonna address jungle more in 825 and 1025, sorry, when she's buffed. Now, on lanes, wherever, whichever lane you are playing, you have to do two major things if you can one survive i'm asking general survivability if you're against a duo which plays with zach ramus hecarim jungle and some assassin or mid lane champion that can instantly got you it's okay but please don't int your first every single game your first thing you have to you gotta do is survive survivability is first the second thing you always gotta do is try to be more useful than the enemy laner now most people won't tell you that but this is a mostly a mid oriented but generally every lane oriented thing that if you are more useful than the opponent in general you did your job right if at the end of the game you can look over the replay and you say oh well the enemy mid laner inted here i did not i catch this guy i did this ult i put this vision word here i have better cs better vision better assist better damage 
then you likely did more and you have, haven't tinted, you've been more useful. That's your main job. As a mid laner, even as a top laner, as a bot, as a support, you have to do more than your counterpart, than your opponent, than the same lane opponent as you. You have to try. And that's your main goal. And how you do? It, how do you generally do that? In lane, you either try to go for this early uh, QE into the wave. I generally like at level one to to do the Q on the minion and E under the wave. I also try to ban Zed, Katarina, and not not play against them or Fizz. I try to dodge these games. I try to stay away from them. Other matchups are doable. You can also itemize against it. But generally, until level six, you should generally be able to deal some serious damage or with the help of a gank to kill the opponent even if you aren't against. Against a very annoying matchup. You're against the Silas, for example. That matchup happens often for Talia because the Silas is often picked, or an Echo, or a what is else picked, or a Kyle because he's, she's strong now. Against these champions, you can actually do the kill early. Against the Yone, you can beat Yone very easily early game until he's six at least. You should be able to beat a Yone, especially since most Yones won't get two magic resist items, the runes. They will go for one magic resist rune, it's fine, we can go with that. We, you go for armor, obviously, against Yone. Against these champions, at level 1, you can just Q. At level 2, you can E. You can play with Corrupting or Dorans. Use Corrupting to deal damage as well if you play with Corrupting. Do not use Corrupting just to heal. Do these auto attacks, because Corrupting helps you with that. Now, you can E at level 2. When you E at level 2 and Q, most, most champions won't be able to keep up with your push. If they do, you will stay around this, this side. If they don't keep up with your push and you shove them under the tower, well, that's your time to actually go warding somewhere. You can go and ward here, you can go and ward here. You can go and ward around here if you think... No, this is bad. Here, maybe. If you think... Or here, to see the scuttle. If you think they started here, or you've seen their bot lane come late, then the top laner just came at the same time as yours. Basically, you've seen that the minions spawned the, the top laners here. It means he started here, so he might go for this route, and then either scuttle or to this zone. And then you can obviously put a word here to know that. You can actually keep the lane pushed and keep this momentum going without going with your mana under 50 you can shove auto attacks in and try to keep this mana again above 50 percent because you can go after that towards the scuttle there, there might be a scuttle fight if you're first at the scuttle fight then you have the option of either stopping the enemy mid laner from coming if your jungler is winning or following with a flash and helping your jungler kill the opponent now you have to pay attention to the enemy top laner and this can happen when you play top or bot as well if you play bot you can shove early on you can go here and help your jungler if you play top you have probably play with ignite as me and then you can try to shove and go mid and go to towards the mid and do early gangs mid or do early scuttle fights Talia is very strong in this scenario she has ignite she has probably the largest damage at level 3 if you hit your full combo electrocute qwe ignite is probably one of the strongest combos into the game at level 3 if you hit it if you have especially a jungler with cc such as the tank meta now ramus you have an Zack, you have a uh, an Amumu or Hecarim. Champions that can set up your E, so Hecarim can push people through your E or Ramus down, can help you with the setup. So wait for their CC, do their full combo, or maybe even help your jungler. If you win the fight, you can do a W on the scuttle to actually help him with that shield. So, this is what you gotta do. Early levels to be more useful than the enemy mid. Level 6 comes, you can actually, before level 6, you can recall at level 5, you can you can come to level 5, uh, you got to still on lane, you haven't gone, went back to get your tome, that's the first item by the way, or parts of it, or boots, small boots don't get, you can get big boots early as well if you want, but generally I go tome into boots, into sorcerers maybe, into landries, Sorcerers maybe after this if I'm fed, I'm not sure. If I feel like I need the movement speed, I will go early. Uh, but don't, I don't, I, I will say don't go for Merc and uh, Armor only if they have four champ, four AD champions, five AD champions or four AP. Go for Mercs and Plated still caps one of those. But generally, if you feel like you need Magic Resist or Armor, you can go regardless of lane. You can go for parts of Zonia, that's the Seeker, or parts of Banshees, that's the what's the name Verdant Barrier, right? So, when you recall, you try to get the vision ward and your item, but at level 5-6, as Dopa said on the uh, 
on the concept theory that he posted, you can Google it on Reddit, uh, Dopa's tricks, Dopa's secrets, whatever. Uh, he said something like on Twisted Fate at level 5 or 6, or at level 5, sorry, when he hits level 5 or level 5 and a bit, he likes to push the wave, shove it in and recall because he knows next time he will get to lane first, especially we will get to lane first because we have the passive of Tulia and Relentless Hunter, and you can get a quick push and the enemy had recall, so you get a quick push, you make level 6 first, and bam, you have a level 6 gank on board. Level 6 gank on bot can be done either through this way or this way or this way if you know they don't have a word here they most champions might most enemies might work here or here to actually see when you leave so you can get six you can move back or you can try to clear this word with the vision word, or you can just go for it if they are close enough here and you are this side you can actually go go towards here cast alt go towards here cast alt or just walk towards it if you what is not needed but be careful to not create a situation where you lose, because you can lose 3 versus 2, you can lose 3 versus 3, you can even lose towards an enemy teleport. You gotta keep this in mind, you gotta try to see these scenarios. Most of the time, in lower levels especially, you're going to create a disadvantage for them. And you'll be able to maybe follow up your support CC, ADC CC if they have, or jungler CC if you do a gank with your jungler, that's another thing that you can do, and gank the bottom. That's a level 6-7, you gotta also expect the uh, follow-up, the immediate follow-up from their jungler, their top, their mid, this, this can be doable, so you gotta assess at the moment, you see, you, you see their enemy top laner teleporting here, they are here, let's say still, you are here, okay, you see the teleport coming in, you do the combo, try to kill someone and then you get out, you get out and you back off if their top laner is stronger than your team, if you assess in time that he's stronger, you don't continue fighting, you back off so you don't tint, and if you kill people, you then can transition into this, uh, into this, mountain or herald on the top side if you win top with the gang so possibilities are quite endless and that's why maybe Mithalia has the highest win rate not because um uh, not because she's strongest there but likely because Mithalia players have the biggest macro knowledge sorry i uh, went for that i would say if you play mid to Lia, you have to keep in mind much more than your Tulia jungle to Lia adc to Lia top to Lia support have to keep in mind because you not only have to be careful on both sides of the map you have to constantly think if you would gank bot or top bot or top sorry if to if you you have this constant annoying lanes which are Z, which are uh which are Katarina and stuff like that. In the jungle, if they come over you, yeah, that's because likely your champ is very bad right now in this patch, but in the next patches, you'll be able probably to duel the enemy jungle if he comes over you. But you can just start on the other side if you think you're gonna get ganked. You can skip some camps and it's fine. You're not going to int necessarily, but on mid, it's very easy to int compared to other lanes. On mid, and maybe against Draven on bot or against the Fiora or Necton on top. These are the matchups in which you may int most, or if you're camped on any of those lanes. So I'd say try to get into the macro stuff try to learn it try to see your own replace when that happened when i should have done that or that was this vision word placement good should i have done here stuff like that again i buy five to six seven vision words a game if every time i recall if i have a lot of spare gold let's say you just bought the entry and you still have and you have already boots and you have 150 more gold so go for these two vision words one of them you can just when you go towards this zone let's just say drake is spawning good you put a single word here a vision word here or here you know they just recalled let's say you, you put the word the vision word here and a single word here you know it's not worth it the entire zone one of these two bashes you can just wait for a full combo because you know their support their jungler they already see their mid will come here and even if you don't one shot that said champion you create already a gap you will lose just half of your mana somewhere there and the enemy mid support adc will be half hp or less than half hp already and so you created basically uh advantage in persons because he won't be able to do that much now unless he's a velcos accelerate and stay very back so keep in mind on this of these things practice your combo in practice tool if you have to so you hit this you you do this combo look at the instant dps that you does that it's a lot with these two items and try to cast q and e try to abuse this movement speed which uh, you get with five relentless uh, hunter stacks so this is what you kind of do level by level have to do early on uh, either try to kill on lane the opponent either try to fight with your jungler or roam bot even earlier than six but if you're against some matchup for example i often kill silas i often kill akali players early on i often kill yona players early on because they actually don't then don't respect Lia's damage they haven't played much against the champions they don't really know how much the damage 
does so you can just eq under their dash bam a lot of damage they are now jumped they have jumped on you with their uh, gap closer and you used e you can go for the kill now because they are the fourth teleport or they misused their ability and went through you can predict a lot of dashes with dc you can predict a lot of dashes and after that this actually wins you the trade against those champions for example and so you can get the kill if you cannot get the kill you just have to farm 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 try to be safe try to help your jungler whenever ping like a maniac when the opponent leaves uh, if you can't follow we're not sure for example let's say it's a fizz at level 6 fizz he made somehow level 6 faster than yours and he went towards here you don't have a vision over here well Unless you go towards here safe, uh, you can't really go, you, your best way would be to just come around and try to follow bot if you can, but he can actually wait you here, here, if you're not sure, uh, you can ping like a maniac and if your bot doesn't back off, sometimes you gotta follow even if it might be an int, but you gotta be more careful on your life than theirs, even though, even though you, if you announced it loud and clear, the moment he left, then it's likely their fault if they don't back off, if they get dived and you haven't followed, they mid dived, them and you haven't followed the three versus three let's say no jungler is involved then yeah it might be your fault because your ult look how fast you can you can actually come here and ult you already reach the tower from here you should theoretically reach very fast them when they get caught or something happens so tending off to bot is another thing that you can do after level six some team fights start around drake some team fights start around herald around baron or around towers you can try to cast these ults you can see my latest videos you can do this kind of sort of or not this one this one is bad you can create vision vision bubbles you can do the combos on someone generally try to wait for a cc or a person that's misplaced and then bam full combo bam full combo you get the combo scene you kill someone you already created the gap your presence of mind returns mana you, your cup degrades deals lots of damage you will be able to run people down especially with lion because it's still very very strong it's a very strong item with the magic pen it works i would recommend uh, to pick it every game go for the drake soul if you can go for the barons try to set up these pockets of vision try to create and control the map try to be on top of the opponent every single time so these are my tips i could probably talk infinitely about this i could probably say well do this and that but let's just exemplify in a game right now and move to it and see how this works in a flex game i say flex because it's also a good point to showcase how i'm doing against plat or diamond level players instead of master grandmasters and challengers uh, i would say uh, it also showcases an example from the point of view of someone who might be silver or gold or platinum if you are silver or gold or platinum i'm playing against those kind of players so you could see what i do different than yours so you compare my replay with yours against the said champion and you can learn from it and you can try to extrapolate these behaviors that you're doing bad and what i'm doing uh, good and or even i'm doing bad or you're doing good try to get this try to make yourself a file i have a desktop file a text file on my discord i also shared it on my uh, frequently asked questions basically so a list of steps to stop a mistake of soft stop doing such as okay uh, you don't get caught again with flash up without using it don't get caught again by the gangs stop inting randomly against that champion stuff like that which i um, watched the replays to understand that lesson and then i learned it and practice it over and over you can draw these lessons out this is basically what happens when someone professionally coaches you it practically looks with you over replay and you draw lessons out from that replay and you practice this stuff that you learn from the replay in your next games and you will be able to better play and better carry and better be a, be a better player overall from that so let's jump straight into the game right now Let's see a full game, uh, hopefully uh, it will be a good one and I'm gonna let the lane phase go and then we're going to move to, to jump in action in scenes towards what I think is fairly important to some examples of either roaming, team fighting, vision control or else. We're gonna see. Let's just jump right into it. So here we are into the game example. We're against a Diana on mid with Ignite and Conqueror. Ignite just states that okay, I wanna murder you, I don't care about scaling some Diana's play with teleport. And so whenever you start the game, you gotta look at your comp and you gotta look at their comp, you gotta look at your jungler and their jungler. You gotta keep in mind the first part of the video as well. Um basically when you have a Nunu, for example, or a Mumu or Generally when you have tanks you can follow them in battle because they're going to resist a bit and you try to wait for their CC do the combo that works Now, you know Nunu should gank a lot more than Talia early on. Why am I getting pinged? Did I do I have wrong runes? Anyway uh, 
I also have chat disabled. Uh, probably they told me something. <laughs> I, I don't play with chat enabled. So, uh, with a Nunu, generally you will know, or with Zack, that you have a surefire way of getting kills because they have a knock up and you can abuse that knock up. You can then play with it and you can try to uh, grow from there. You can do the full combo. Why is Diana AFK? Uh, this might be a remake. Okay, it's not a remake. So, uh, you gotta think if your jungler will fight the enemy jungler and where every single time. And in order to respect the second lesson, so to do more than uh, the opponent, basically you have to be there first. So if your jungler gets invaded or, uh, you know, uh, maybe he fights somewhere with the opponent or even if he invades, you gotta be there and you gotta try. Okay, so this is a free... Now, if you would jump on me, for example, here, I could I could just kill her. Now, I go here and put a word, that was a bad word, should have put it in the bush, for the impending fight at the scuttle, which might be on this side of the map. I need to cover for the Nunu, and I need to stay on this side because now I have vision. This is a very bad word, could have put it more... more close. I, I wait now for her to jump on me because I know I can actually get the kill on her. She can actually flash my W, but that's generally fine. Okay, so this is a full combo. Bam, you cast it. You don't ignite yet. You just wait for the next one. You don't ignite yet until you are sure you can get the kill. If you ignite and they play with the teleport, you will have a problem because they will just teleport back. And now you just wasted your own summoner spell and they have advantage now because they came also with an item. And also level advantage. So you do another combo. Now you can, this is a good moment to actually cast the ignite. You position yourself as such so you can do this and you get the first blood. This is an easy example because I'm mainly against Inflex now against the lower uh, elo champion, a lower player, but you can still get this. This was basic Talia 101 comboing. I hit two combos. It's not hard to hit him if you practice him, practice tool a bit. I created the vision gap for, look, look, we see now him because of this. And I won't do. If he jumps on me, well, I could I could follow, actually. I could definitely follow. But their jungle, he's be here, their bot might come, their, their mid laner might come. So, you gotta keep in mind the possibility of them actually following. And now we have to back off. We have to back off because I don't have mana. I'm gonna ping, wait. I don't have mana to do anything else. I had, I tried to help Nono. Because he had this uh, this Q, but uh, we haven't got that. It's fine. Now, d doing this so lost me an entire wave. And that uh, that's a bad decision after all, if you look at it. Because in we took a risk and we lost the risk. You will take lots of risks during a game. And you have to win most of them to actually stomp, to actually carry. If you win only half of them or part of them, you can still be more useful than the enemy mid laner. Because the enemy mid laner might take no risks at all. And you already have advantage there. Right? So I'm just gonna do an E, try to position myself for a Q, missed a bit of it, it's fine. Gonna put the potion here, should have got the vision word as well. And I'm gonna ping that Diana has no flash, I'm also gonna word it here. But theoretically, uh, theoretically Hecarim could actually easily gank me if he comes from that side, but we will see him now. And we should be able to react in time if he comes. And I always try to stay to the side of my jungler, why is he dying? Is he dying? I always try to stay to the side of my jungler because I could easily back off to him if uh, it's needed. So, yeah, I'm just gonna get this. We haven't seen any Hecarim yet. We are very relaxed. We just farm. Look, that word. You see the word? You see the word? You see? I'm wasting time for the Hecarim now. I'm wasting lots of time for the Hecarim now because he doesn't know what to do. Okay, he decided he will go top, right? We can also follow now and go top. Because Diana doesn't follow. Right? And we can get the kill onto the guy. And we definitely win this one now. Oh, should. Definitely should. Alright. Got that. Diana might be following. It was fine. Oh, I see Diana there. I see she's 6, I see she's going to ult me, I could also ult out, but I don't think it's needed, honestly, I, it's not needed. That teleport was meh. 
that was a good fight in terms of uh, going there. It was bad in terms of the fact that we didn't actually uh, get a kill with Altai, but it's fine. Now, I seen that word, it exploded. We also got a free Drake on the other side of the map. We created a 2 versus 3 in which we did more than the enemy jungle, the enemy mid laner, and we also came back for a wave here. Now, she failed because she followed and she didn't actually push it in first. She also lost a lot of CS, which in turn gave me a lot of momentum to work and to play around with. Uh, we could have killed Jax faster there if I hit the combo. And we also got a free Drake out of that, so it's fine. Net win. Net win from us. Now, she has Ignite, I know that, but she doesn't have Flash, so there is no way for her to actually gap close me. I can just full combo here, get that, miss that. I don't even care about pushing it full in, because she can, she can uh, actually... Uh, if she wants, she can actually not push it, because I will just go and gank bot. So it's fine for me. I'm gonna get a vision ward, two vision wards, not gonna get a potion, because I don't feel like I need it that much. And I'm just gonna start rolling these ganks around the map. I have already two Rentus Hunter stacks. I need to be more useful than her. So reminder, that's a reminder, constant reminder in your head. Be more useful than her. Now, if she's a Cassadin, for example, she will eventually be more useful than you, regardless what you do. So you have to be more useful in the first part of the game because that's what your champion does. If you're against an early game champion, for example, such as a Pantheon, then you should definitely not int him early and try to do more uh, roaming wise. If you're against, see now he wins on top. If you're against, uh, yeah, he's dead. If you're against something like Twisted Fate, you gotta do more and better roams. So I'm going here, I'm actually putting a vision ward, I'm cleaning up the vision. And I am backing off, but you can you can just turn around. You can predict where you will go, and uh, then you can switch the direction. You can you can make them think, oh well, he's not actually going bot because he turned around, right? I'm not gonna try to hit her. I don't have any reason to fight her right now, and I'm just gonna want to get that. She can actually block it if she wants. So, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna wait and try to gank bot and move towards that. Okay, I see the fact that she left, so I'm gonna ping that she left, right? And I know she might wait for me here. See? So I'm gonna cast an ult here to try to separate them, like this. And maybe he will leave, but I don't really think so. Yeah, can't help her more, can't help him more than this, because he got himself cornered in that spot. We did the best that we could, we used an ult to try to actually stop that from happening there. Should be careful now. I'm going bot. Look at this. This is a free opportunity for me to gank bot here. Why? Because Xayah just ulted, and I know she also just. Uh, I know she also just flashed, right? Because she did that before. She flashed forward, and I ping me because I think they like how I play. Should I enable chat just to see what they say? If they say anything, maybe they insult me. Let me just. I keep it disabled because I see no reason to play with it on, especially in uh, some games. For example, in ranked games you're gonna have flamers. Now top lane stomps, and this is likely because I went there and helped him, right? Okay, this is a full combo, gonna cast ignite here, actually I don't need to, I think Nunu will hit the ball on her, oh, that's bad, could have, uh, could have forced flash maybe. And they are ready to fight, and they are ready to win. Okay, okay, coming, and we got the game. We already won the game by these small actions, which you see here. We already likely won the game by this. We help our bot much more than mid laner, than their mid laner and jungler do. We play around like this. We even vision ward it here to be safe. And look, she might be ahead in CS. She is. But she's not ahead in <laughs> that Lulu. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they uh, they love me. Now I'm generally hitting the combo on this guy because I know how to predict. She's fairly predictable, but some other people are not. And look, she's ahead in levels. Okay, now I see Lulu coming, right? I try to bait it in. I try to bait a fight. Uh, no, no, actually made it <laughs> clear that. Come on, jump on me. I tried to bait it in. 
I can't. Ah, oh, fuck it. Okay. Alright. Might die here, don't care, we get double kills. It's fine. This was amazingly fine, we also get a lot of plates. And we gave a shutdown, that's generally bad. But it's not a, that's a huge problem if you get two kills for one. Alright, so I'm gonna get vision words here again. They cleared it, this one was more likely to defend against the Diana because she was missing. So I could leave, but uh, also to help my bot. Now, we see here a teleport from Jax. You could have attacked one more time, man. Would have got another plate there. Oh, okay, never mind. You can get outside of the range, my bad. Alright, so. My neck hurts as hell because I spoke too much. My CS levels are fine. I have 7 kill participation. Diana has only 2. Which means, and also if you look at damage, it generally means that we are more useful than... Uh, than she is. I'm going top to stop. Uh, uh, I think I think he will have actually. I think we have to, to go bot here because Diana will go. Uh, Jax will get some plates, but that's fine. I'm just gonna ult it like this and not care about it. Alright. A W here. I'm gonna likely die. Why did she jump? Jesus. I mean, I mean, she probably chose not to die randomly. Alright. So we basically won uh, 4 versus 4, a hard 4 versus 4 while also getting Drake. Uh, she could have stopped me there, she didn't. I just wanted to stop her from going there at all. I didn't care if she stopped me because I would have fought her. And I know she had no ult, so I could have won that. And my team probably would have won regardless because we have an overfed Cyan. In the middle of the rest of them. So, uh, I want to go here, but I really can't because of the fact that Jax can just flash on me. Okay, he's a bit bad. But now, a Scion went there. Just use teleport. We can also get another vision word. I like to spam them. It's better to get the use of happy buying more than needed, but you have to actually use them because if you buy two vision words and leave them in your bag for the whole game, or if you put them like right here and you know their support is here, you just int it. You just give it for free. If you, they see you and it's aggressive and their team is there, you just put it for no reason. You gotta find those ways to actually put it right. You can see they took my uh, my vision word on board. That was a likely inted vision word. Right, so now I also can move freely around the map because my support is here, and so I could definitely go and put a vision ward here. Then I could move towards bot. Their Nami knows, their Nami knows that uh, I am going there. I'm also checking for vision wards now a bit more. This this word here should have been spotted. Also, Nami follows. I am not really afraid of much now. When you're this ahead, you can be pretty pretty strong. Right, gonna go back, get this. I think he loses the one versus one. Yep. He loses the one versus one because Jax is a very strong true damage dealer. And I could perhaps surprise here the Jax. Because he will come here for the minions. I could go put a knee down. And he jumped the other way. Which is fine for me. I think he will die from, yeah. So I got the Jax for free. I see the Hecarine going here, which means likely our team will lose. Wow, that damage. Now Diana will die as well. All right, I maybe miscalculated the dive there, but it eventually turned out right. Also missed that. So you can see how we do this stuff. We go for the free kills. We go for the free uh, help of my team when the jungler is on the other side of the of the map. So you gotta play like this. You gotta understand this and understand where the key points are. You gotta learn over from your own replay. If you're not learning here, if you're not learning those, watch enough replays till you see it. Not only from your own replays, you can also write, for example, uh, on, uh, or you can also watch my YouTube videos. You can watch challenger replays. There are lots of replays on YouTube. Okay, so now we can go for, I would go for uh, something like Banshees. Uh, first, I get the other one. Why? Why is this? Well, because Jax deals a lot of AP damage. 
Uh, Hecarim will want to engage maybe on me so I'd have Banshee shield up. And Diana deals a lot of AP damage. And Nami is some damage as well. So having the shield up against a Hecarim hard engage or a Jax, it's pretty good. A magic resist helps a lot. So this is a good way of not passing your bounty for no absolute reason. I'm gonna miss the cannon. Okay, I didn't. Sometimes you will lose these cannons. Okay. Perhaps I miscalculate the amount of damage she does. But this, I think this is int. Yeah, I, I inted that. I inted the flash. Okay. We, I think Lulu outplayed him. Put it on the minion, put it on the minion. <laughs> Yeah, we got 3-4 kills for one. I gave the shutdown, which is bad, but in general, it's fine. Oops, what did I buy? I have the Banshee now, because it's so cheap. Where is it? Yeah, I already have the Banshee, guys. The Banshees, guys. But you can see, at a certain point, uh, you won't be able to one-shot people. For example, I can't one-shot the Hecarim, because he went for Mercury Treads, for a Phage, for Divine Thunder. He has lots of HP, right? So I can't one-shot him. So I don't focus on that part. I focus on the uh, going for the Jax kill, for the Diana kill, and all of them went for Mercury Treads. In this scenario, uh, Void stuff starts to be appealing, actually. Uh, flat Pen starts to be appealing, but uh, Orb no longer gives Flat Pen. So, Sork Shoes is a must. And playing like you won't one-shot people is a must. I can one-shot only Nami uh, and the, the Xayah. This is the people that I can one-shot, right? So we go for one-shots there. I don't go all in with my Ignite without knowing fully that I can't one-shot someone. I'm gonna cast this W. I think it's gonna reset. Right. Nice. I am gonna take this from the Nuno. Because I definitely need it. I'm gonna protect this word here. I missed that combo. Now when you miss the combo, you gotta be aware of the fact that uh, that Diana might turn on you, for example. Okay, we know that Jax is also coming. So we let we let them do their job. We just protect from the Jax. We don't need to risk it. See? I didn't have to do anything. I know Nunu is very strong. I know Nunu can do such things against her. Okay, I also didn't notice that. A bit tired, but I guess it would work better in with a coffee <laughs> beforehand. Alright. Let's get our Drake here. You can see Cyan wins 1 versus 2 already. I missed that, but we still catch her. Put the E down. I know the ult might come, but it's fine. That was a free kill again. Now, if I had the other jungler, if I had the Hecarim, I would have played accordingly. I would have tried to follow him and help him against Nunu, try to get the kill on Nunu. I would be aware of the fact that Nunu has much more movement speed because of the ball, because of the face rush proc, easily face rush proc, and the flash, and I would do my combo accordingly. My neck hurts so hard. So whenever you have the oppressive jungler, you play with him and you play aggressive. If you have the defensive jungler, so someone that needs to scale a bit, such as a Cartus. Did I get it? I'm not sure. You have to play like it. Now, you have to play like what your jungler does. Now, I also have a vision word into the pit, because I always have two vision words with me. So this is an immense advantage. So we get a free Baron at minute 20, because you also have Lyandry and you have your ADC, who deals lots of damage. So that is that. I don't have ult. I don't need so. We can actually start running them down. We can actually ignore that. We can definitely just go in and from mid. Uh, I think she gave up. Or was AFK there? I'm not sure. Now what I have to do is put a knee down before the Hecarim jumps in. Because he will likely jump in. Or before the Diana engage. See, this is the Diana engage. Do a W, get the kill on Diana, then move towards your jungler, move towards their top laner, get the kill on the top laner. Right, Nunu is on the other side of the map, we could probably even end. 
All right. 19 kill participation out of 32. Most in the game, actually. We are doing this very, very well. Full combo hit onto the Nunu. Okay, gonna cast Ignite on this guy. Gonna get the kill there. And then I'm gonna try to help my Scion. Bam! Easy combo from the setup. You see, I'm following the setup. I'm not risking anything. We're also gonna get the bot side. My next still in pains. Going just for one inhib is generally bad. Because you will just give free gold. Right? You will just give free, free gold to the opponent. I'm here trying to find the key pick. I'm gonna put this vision word here. I know they don't have any vision here. So we just wait. We nicely wait. <laughs> okay. Wait. Go. Ha, ah, come, 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 come. Surprise, Jax! <laughs> and he deals a lot of damage. What? Doesn't matter. We still win this. We are having a very strong tank. This is just shenanigans. I'm even if you lose this fight, we still won the game. It's very hard to troll from this point and lose it. I think they will win this three versus four because of how strong both Nunu. Look, look, they don't get damage, man. Tank meta, by the way. Yeah, they might lose, but Aphelios is here. Come on, guy. Just start melting them down. Or miss that. Look! Uh, that was sort of a need, but the game was already won, so that's what you need to know. It's not that relevant if you still do more. I sort of int it, but it's fine. Let's just get blue. We can get soul, we can get baron again. Inhibs are down. It doesn't matter, really. Most of the work, you have to do it in the first 15 minutes. First to 20 minutes, and then you just gotta do these small insurances more insurance policies that will win you the game such as getting a one shot on someone getting a baron getting a soul if you have this available or close enough without the risk of stealing from the opponent you get these insurances in and you likely are going to win the game from that for example i have rabadon soon didn't stop them there <laughs> okay. He literally ulted the moment he seen me. Let's help this guy. I also have Rabadons, but no. man, why did I? All right. Let's just go here and end. And this was a textbook game. I won mid, then I started moving bot. I won bot, and I also killed top. I also won top partially there. Did a pretty bad fight that even trailed 2 versus 3 resulted in a win for us. <laughs> Hello. He spotted me. Also, we can see how annoying is Jax. He truly is annoying, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, she's, this is probably worth it, or she probably expected that. You can see Jax is actually pretty strong. But we don't care. Regardless of how strong the bruiser is, we can still we can still definitely win. All right, get the tower. I think Diana is AFK. Yep. Dodge that bubble. Hit the full combo maybe, but I don't think so. And end the game here. I just throw random skills right now. I'm a bit, a bit too tired after this. Woohoo, that damage. So that was the example, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned from the first part of the video, from the second part of the video. This was overall a pretty good example of what I wanted to achieve. We followed the concepts, the points, and I will keep doing this kind of videos, this kind of hard tutorial videos. I will also keep doing Grandmaster videos. I am to at 20... Eh. I'm at 200 LP right now in Master in Grandmasters. It's pretty fine. So I guess yeah. See you next time, and I really hope you enjoy this kind of videos, guys. Goodbye.